In this session of Look at the Book, I want to ask this question, and I want to try to get the answer from Micah, Prophet Micah 7, 7 through 9. And the question is, how, as a justified and secure, eternally secure child of God, should we, or should I, or you, deal with or respond to God's disciplining judgment in our lives, which can be very painful even unto death. Now, the situation, before I read this, the situation in Micah's day, let me just get the preceding verse. The son treats the father with contempt. The daughter rises up against her mother the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Does that sound familiar? Jesus quotes it in Matthew 10, 34. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Jesus is quoting Micah 7, 6. So he's, he's showing that the situation here in Micah's day is a foretaste of the situation in our day that he himself is bringing into the world. And so if we find ourselves in these kinds of relational conflicts, we should not think, oh, well, that's something that should only happen in the Old Testament. It doesn't happen really today. Jesus is making clear that Micah's situation is very relevant, and we sometimes find ourselves caught up into this vortex of evil and ourselves participating in it in doing evil ourselves, which is precisely what Micah is going to deal with. So I think this is incredibly relevant. Now let's read it. But as for me, and this is the prophet, and perhaps speaking for more than himself, but any godly person in the midst of this situation. As for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my, my salvation. My God will hear me. So, rejoice not over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I will rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he pleads my cause and executes judgment for me, he will bring me out to the light. I shall look upon his vindication. So, Father, this is precious beyond words, what you show us here about how a justified child of God in a, an unbreakable covenant with you responds to your judgment and your indignation and the darkness that you bring over our lives sometimes because we have sinned. Show us how to do this, I pray, so that we would not collapse under the weight of your frown. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Even as I'm praying that, I know some of you would be asking, are you kidding me? You, that's the way you think about the Christian life? You think that sort of thing happens to Christians? Let me just give you an illustration. 1 Corinthians 11, concerning the Lord's Supper in verses 29 and 32. Anyone who eats or drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That's why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. Some Christians have died because they eat and drink without discerning the body at the Lord's Supper. But if we judged ourselves, we truly, we would not be judged in that way. But when we are judged by the Lord in that way, we are disciplined, not condemned, disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So, this judgment by the Lord is a discipline 
even if it involves us dying so that we won't go to hell along with the world. So yes, <laughs> yes, I do believe God does that sort of thing in the New Testament under grace. So now here is the lesson Jesus is directing us to indirectly by citing verse 6. What do you do when you find yourself in a situation of guilt before God and your enemy is mocking you? As for me, I will look to the Lord. That's the first thing you do. You look to the Lord. You wait for the Lord. And by implication, you call to the Lord because it says he will hear me. So you've said something to him. You have salvation. He is your God. You haven't changed your mind about that. You love him still and you love his salvation and you count on it. And now rises up his faith. Rejoice not over me, O my enemy. So the enemies are surrounding him like bulls and mocking him because he has sinned, this godly Christian. Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, when I fall. I have fallen. I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. So he's, let's number these. He's fallen. He's, he's sitting in darkness. He's bearing the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he pleads my cause, executes judgment for me, he will bring me out to the out of the out to the light. I shall look upon his vindication. So let's go back and number those. Rejoice not, it's the first great act of confidence. Rejoice not over me. When I fall, I will rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my cause. Isn't that amazing? So the Lord, the Lord is the one under whose anger he sits and he sits there in the darkness which comes from the Lord because he has fallen and he has sinned and in his judgment under God, for his sin, he asserts, God will become my lawyer. He's not going to just judge me. He is going to be my advocate. He will execute judgment for me. That's number five. He will execute judgment for me. He will bring me out to the light. That's number six. I will look upon his vindication or his righteousness. So seven times here, he says, Yes, I'm guilty. Yes, I have fallen. Yes, I'm sitting in darkness. Yes, I'm under his indignation. Yes, I have sinned. But no, 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 Satan. Get out of my face. Do not rejoice over me, because I will rise. The Lord will be a light to me. He will plead my cause. He will execute judgment for me, not against me. He will bring me into light, not darkness. I will see his righteousness on my behalf, namely my vindication. That's the way justified sinners deal with the displeasure of God in our lives, even if he brings us to the point of and through death. We never, ever give up on God's favor for us. I call this gutsy, gutsy, guilt. Or you could call it broken hearted boldness. Or you could call it um, contrite courage. And oh, the beauty of the Christian life. So many people want to just talk in terms of courage, just talk in terms of of gutsiness, just talk in terms of boldness. And they don't have any of the flavor of meekness under the mighty hand of God where we've been we've been broken because of our sin. And we, we know that even after we have been justified, we do things for which we ought to be condemned. We are really guilty of those things. And we should be contrite 
And then once we have tasted true guilt, true contrition, and true brokenheartedness, there rises up a lion-hearted gutsiness like this. And we get in Satan's face and all the accusers around us, and we say, no, 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 my God is for me. He executes judgment for me, and I will 